video, we'll look at the calculation of what speed is necessary to escape from a planet or the moon or an asteroid. And what we're dealing with here is the force of gravity is attractive. Two objects attract each other. So we have some small spacecraft that wants to uh, leave the object. That's uh, item B, trying to escape from the planet. Let's say that's object A. Uh, we want the object B, the spacecraft, to start moving away from the planet and always keep moving away until actually at a distance of infinity it finally has a uh, velocity of zero. But we don't want it to stop at some point and start coming back to the, uh, the planet. We're escaping. We're not coming back. So we're going to make an assumption here. We're going to say that our object A has no atmosphere. We're going to ignore that. And uh, we're going to leave from the surface of each object. So it turns out that the escape velocity is just equal to a square root of 2 multiplied by the circular velocity. The circular velocity is equal to the square root of the constant g, the gravitational constant, capital G, times the mass of the object divided by the radius of the object. We're going to assume the object is a sphere. So square root of 2 multiplied by this circular uh, orbit velocity. Well, we can rearrange things a little bit. As I want to do this calculation four times, I want to factor out the constants into their own square root. Square root of 2g, that's in one square root, and square root of the mass of the object divided by the radius of the object in the next square root. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this, this calculation for the Earth, and I'll do it a little bit more detail for the Earth. For escape velocity, it's going to be the square root of 2 times 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. That's the uh, the capital G. So 2 times 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. That's in one square root. And then I have to multiply by the square root of the mass of the Earth, 5.9736 times 10 to the 24th, divided by the radius of the Earth, assuming the Earth is a sphere, 6.376 times 10 to the 6 meters. It is important that the mass you're using is in kilograms and the uh, radius is in meters. So you should repeat this on your own calculator. But uh, for the square root, I'm coming up with 1.155 times 10 to the minus 5. And then doing the, uh, the calculation of the um, mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the Earth. And I did not do this calculation separately, so I'm doing it right now on the calculator that you cannot see. And after I take the square root, I get, uh, for this next factor, 9.679 times 10 to the seventh. We multiply those two together. And for the Earth, I'm coming up with um, 11.2 times 10 to the fourth meters per second, or 11. Point, um, something is not right here. 11, no, this is 10 to the third, or 11.2 kilometers per second. 11.2 kilometers per second. Um, so let's try another one of these. For the moon, so my escape velocity, I'm just going to use this constant over 10 to the minus 5 and square root of 7.3 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms. And pull this into view for you. Uh, 1.74 times 10 to the 6 meters. These two factors underneath the square root. Do this calculation. And I got 2.4 times 10 to the third meters per second, or 2.4 kilometers per second. 
So not a surprise that it's not as difficult to escape from the moon as from the earth. The earth has 82 times more mass. The moon um, is a little smaller as well, so that uh, also increases the escape velocity uh, smaller than the earth. So there we are for, uh, for the case of uh, the moon and the earth, continuing on for Mars. And I'm not going to bother to write down you know, inside the square root mass divided by radius. Uh, but what I came up with for Mars was 5.02 times 10 to the third. Again, you should check my work here, or 5.02 kilometers per second. It's easier to escape from Mars than it is from the Earth. Mars has less mass than the Earth, almost by a factor of 10. Um, and then the uh, last one here, the minor planet in the asteroid belt series. Um, it has a much smaller mass and a smaller radius. So, so how does this work out? For the escape velocity for Ceres, I came up with 0 0.51 times 10 to the third, just to put the same power of 10 on this, or uh, 510 meters per second, or 0.5 kilometers per second. So, quite a bit easier to escape from uh, an asteroid. And there are missions to asteroids being planned and uh, to land and return a sample back to Earth. It will not be difficult for that spacecraft to escape uh, from the minor planet Ceres, or they're not going to Ceres right away, but uh, if it was the case of that one, it would be easy to escape. The, on the targets that are proposed that I've read about are even easier to escape from. Uh, than uh, what we have for series. So there we are for an escape velocity. Uh, it's, uh, I didn't do more of the physics uh, analysis of this, but um, ask your instructor if you have questions on how this formula is developed. The escape velocity is square root of 2 times the circular velocity. The circular velocity is the square root of the gravitational constant times the mass of the object divided by the radius of the object. So, Keep practicing, and uh, if you do have other questions about astronomy or physics videos, my YouTube videos are annotated, a listing with a little description, uh, physics.gpclements.com, astronomy.gpclements.com. We'll see you in the next video.